Well, they'll get the downloads and whatever. I'm so sorry. I don't know why it didn't go. I hit it to begin with. But anyway, so Canva. So a lot of people um, know Canva, but it can the, for the ones that don't, it can do so much. And for batching, I love um, I batch content. That is a way to create um, quick, quickly create content. So I like to think about, so we talked about buckets and thinking about types of content that you can create. So if it's educational, if it's, you know, a set of tips. So within Canva, you have all of these options of what you can create. And there's like everything under the sun. So if you're doing social media posts, I always choose Instagram just because it's square and square works. You, it has to be square for it to be on, uh, in, to post on Instagram, or it has to be a weird, I think it's 16 by nine or something like that. But other than that, it won't post. So choose, um, choose the template, which is, and then you'll, and I have a pro account. So, which I suggest if you're, if you have a business, it's only $10 a month for the pro account and it is so worth the extra because you get um, there's free templates, but then you also get all of these extra pro templates. You also, when you're searching for images, there's like 25 times more images that you get. So I'm just going to show you how quick. So you just pick a template and there's, I don't even know how many templates there would be, but you can search, you can even search like if you were looking for, I don't know what, uh, Memorial Day or or whatever, um, you can search for them and actually find ones that somebody has done. Like there's a welcome autumn. Um, so I create ones. I create sets of these. I should pull one up. But basically, they all have the same look, but they're kind of like that presentation I did. You know, the picture may be over here um, so that they're all branded the same. So I'll go through and I'll do 30 of them you know, my background would, you know, might would be purple, probably not for a post like this, but um, go ahead and add your logo. So if you go to uploads, I do tons of customer work. So I can't promise you if we scroll through these uploads, what you might see as far as I do dentist work. And let me see. Uh, also with the uploads in Canva, you have folders, which is really amazing. So you can create your own folders of stuff and your logos. So like all of my logos, if I just wanted to pop in. So I get one ready. So let's say I put that there. Let's pretend like this is ready. I would copy it and then I could put a new text here and I can drag. I'll show you how easy it is to drag another photo. And again, I have the um, pro account, it's $10 a month. And so if I was looking for coffee, I can scroll, I can sort and see pro and free and apply filters. And you can see all of the content. So let's say I just liked this and there you go. So whatever it needs to say, this is maybe not the best, but best option, but I run through and I do as many posts as I can at a time. And again, I wouldn't have all of them be exactly the same. A lot of times with this one template, there will be another template um, that is very similar to it, or I will copy it and just rearrange it myself to where this is up here. And I might bring this down here. I might bring this. A lot of times when you buy, when you use ones that they've had, they've got it all grouped together. So I had to ungroup it, but you'll get the idea. So you can quickly So I'll make <clears throat> something like this, and this is kind of ugly, but I would make probably 10 to 12 of these that are all a little bit different, but the same. And then I go and take my buckets of content and what I'm looking to do and we'll come in and actually add the text or whatever I'm trying to uh, 
trying to do. So if it's inspirational or um, a lot of times I'll do uh, educational stuff, so tips and things like that. Um, but once these are done, you can download oops, PNG is your best format and you can download all of the pages or you, and it comes down as a zip if you choose them all or you can download them one at a time. Um, some quick tips about Canva is if you, so when you get done with this, obviously save this as, you know, whatever. Um, let's say just post one. I like to save, even though it's saving, I have had terrible mishaps <laughs> where something happens with the internet and it didn't save. Um, so I'll every now and again, just go to save. So if I go back out of here and I go back to home and I refresh and I click on all my designs, you'll see this one post if it comes up. Come on, internet. All your design. Sorry. He's trying. Must not like video happening at the same time. So this is the post. So if I were to, or we'll use this one as an example, you can just quickly. So I've got that set done. I've got 30 in there. I can make a copy and then I can rebrand this next copy. You can change the name of it here. So this would be you know, set to whatever come in and just change. So take the time. So batching, take the time to create you some templates. You can buy templates, uh, Canva templates that are already done. If you go to creative market, so search Canva, social media, We'll just do social media. <clears throat> and you will see like these. All right. Let's see if I can find. Oh, well, we'll show this. I love pink, but we'll show it anyway. So you can get an idea of what you get. So for these are actually a little bit more expensive. You can typically get um, them for a lot less than this, like less than $20. And you'll get... Um, I don't know. You'll see what's in here. So these are already set. Basically, these little guys are where you pull images in. All right. So they're templates. Now, granted, uh, Canva already has tons of templates. Why would you want this? Because these are all branded already. <laughs> so and ready. You know, if you can find something, these are Pinterest templates and Pinterest templates and then Twitter and Facebook. Um, but I wasn't the best one to show. I thought it was. Sorry. But you get the idea. So you can buy sets, you know, and if you have like that one says there's 1240 of them, they're not all going to look the same. But I'll just give you an, a, an example, $47 for the commercial license. And, you know, you just drop them into Canva and you can edit. And there's some good looking ones. So um, but that's create uh, creative market. There's other places that you can buy them too. You can, Etsy has where you can buy So you can see there's a good many here. Not as many as on Create Space, but um, but you can see about them here, $7. So, and this is for a spa. So you might even can find, you know, ones that are tailored towards your brand. Oh, one other trick really quick. What time is it? Oh, let's go. One second. I just want to show you this really quick. So here, if I choose, so let's say you bought a set of templates and it's not your color. Well, that's okay. If you click here and you want to change the color, let's say I wanted to change it to this blue. Oh, usually down here, I can't get to it. Hold on. Let me go here. I change to this blue and normally it will be in your account. I promise you, but normally there is down here. It will let you change it for all of those colors within the whole set of the template. Um, 
at one time. So you just have to scroll down to it, but it'll say, do you want to change them all? And it, so look for it down here. Um, even if you didn't, it's pretty quick to, um, to change them, but it is normally right here. Let me see if I can do it on text just so you can see it. And then um, one other thing that I was just going to touch on while I'm trying to do this is you can save a ton of time. I don't know why it's showing up. Maybe they, maybe that, maybe they're doing an update right now, but it normally will be right here. So you'll definitely, they, they didn't take it away. So it'll, it'll come back if they're in, in the middle of an update or something, it will come back, but it's the handiest thing in the world because you can change every single of this color to this color. Uh, if it's a block or if it's text, you have to do the text separate and it will do, it would brand the whole thing. So that's a little power tip. So I do have a camera training coming out that'll be free and I'll just put it in. Um, I'll put it in the group too, for y'all to have. Um, and the last thing is, uh, tools ripple is makes videos it's an app there's tons of them so if you go on your phone um, basically it just makes little things like this so instead of just having a, um, a static ad canvas getting into it too they do have animations um, I've played with it some and they do just fine but um, ripples good Julie yes um, someone asked about uh, Angel asked about colors. I remember you and I went to that the CMYK or whatever they're called that code. And she um, Angel asked, could you get the exact colors using that code? I can't remember if it was that one or the other. Did we have to convert it to a different code, or was it how does which one does it use? Here it uses. So if I click this, it uses the um, hex code. And there's a handy little um, add-on to Chrome that you can get called Colorzilla. That you just go to uh, type in Colorzilla. In here, let me put it in here real quick. We had to use that with mine, I think, to convert. Yes. Yeah. All right, so Colorzilla, and you search for it in Google, and it will let you install it, and it will let me get back to it. Okay, so it will let you color pick this color. So I do the eyedropper. I'm gonna do the color picker, and well, it was supposed to pick. I was gonna pick that, but anyway, how it works is. Yeah. All right. See the color. It thinks it's white. But anyway, so I could post that in there and then it would be there's that color that it picked up out of that bar up there. All right. So hex colors are what um, the uh, Canva uses. So to, and there's converters online as well. So if you have the CMYK. Um, so CMYK to hex converter or RGB to hex converter. Basically you put in whatever your um, person or however you have it gave to you, like there's a CMYK and it'll take it to the hex. So yes, be sure that you get your brand colors and um, that you have them stored somewhere that you can always, you know, keep them the same. Um, we did, I do like a, mood board when I'm working with people. Um, I don't know, it's probably like, I have no idea where it would be, but um, that would actually put it, you could do one for yourself. I don't know if this is the right one, but I'm gonna show you. This might be one I was doing for a tutorial. Um, but basically this is how this works. You can just drag in things that you love. There's the colors, you know, things of inspiration. So, and you make your own mood board. And there's one for a client that we pulled, you know, her colors out of. Um, last thing, um, another tool, another huge tool, it would be automation software, something like Hootsuite or Buffer. Um, I do, um, I have Socially Inclined, which is a social media dashboard. Basically, it, I don't think I have it pulled up, but basically you, can schedule to all the major networks. So if I let me pull up my account, you can, I can schedule to Facebook. It'll email face Facebook took away the ability to schedule to your personal profile back in 2018. So we have a way for you to email it to yourself so that you and at the time that it's supposed to post. And other than that, you can do Facebook pages, um, groups, Instagram, direct posting to Instagram, LinkedIn, 
and YouTube and Twitter and Google My Business. So if you have a Google My Business, that is great for SEO. We didn't talk about it here because it's not truly a social media network, but it um, you can put posts on it just like it is a social media network. So, um, so I'm going to see if I can find. But basically, you can use a uh, software like this to um, schedule all of your content and you'd, you'd be on a calendar like this. You can see, you know, what's set to what's set to go and schedule it ahead of time. So basically if I wanted to post this, I can just click to approve it and it will go on whatever date, April 15th at 9 a.m. or I can schedule it and go post now. So there's tons of schedulers out there um, that you can use um, that truly helps to uh, save time and effort. So batch your content. So do a bunch of content at one time and then either schedule, you can schedule natively too. So you can go to Facebook and you can schedule ahead using the Facebook app. So schedule ahead on Facebook, some one way or the other, batch your content and schedule ahead and get a plan together. Flying by the seat of your pants is terrible because then you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs thinking, what am I going to post today? I don't know. But if you come up with, um, you know, if you come up with content ahead of time, it's just easy. It's like, oh, it's Tuesday. I'm supposed to be doing a tip Tuesday. So, all right. Questions? Sorry. Um, we're going to open it. We're going to unmute everybody so anyone can ask questions um, through chat or I don't even know if I'm, let's see. Boom. So everybody should be able to talk now and ask questions and it should be open to um, everyone's mic. I'm not going to show you on video either. It's just microphone <laughs> for the rest of you. So don't worry. I actually would love to test that to see what, if everybody came on on video, like I've not tested. A Angel, bunch of can I turn you on, on video? Yeah. Okay. It's going to ask your permission. So that's good. So it does ask permission. So you can say no if you don't want on video, y'all. I actually put makeup on for you guys today. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> oh, it worked. I haven't had it on all week. <laughs> you don't have to say yes, y'all, if you don't want to go video, but everyone's on audio now. Let me try something. I wonder if I can get this Hi, into the big screen. Uh, doing video yeah, I see uh, y'all on like the little tiny screen. That's cool. So tell me how big, so does it fill the whole screen? Do you see like the six blocks of us on your screen? No, hole? no it's oh, just no, on the side. Open yeah, we might have got. Open. No, you don't because you're a presenter, Jamie. What about okay. uh, Angel? What about you? What do you no, it's, it's uh, six little boxes on the right hand, upper right. Oh, on the right hand side. Okay. Yeah. Just the people that accept it. Right on video now. There's probably a way for me. To, oh, you know what? Hold on. Oh. Well, that just enabled everybody. Uh, okay. I was hoping it'd put it in the middle so y'all can see it bigger. Oh, well. New, new software. So did you like, have, who on here has used Zoom before? Probably most everybody. Yeah, I love Zoom. So that's why I have this for my training because Zoom is, um, from time to time, it's hard for some people to get connected to Zoom. So like they have to install it. First. So this is just a link. All right, questions? I have a question about Facebook Pixel. Um, I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it's used for. Can you, do you are you aware of it? Can you oh, yes. About it? Yes. So what the Pixel is used for is for tracking people that come to your website. So what you'll do is you'll go into Facebook Ads Manager. You will get your Pixel and then it will be installed on your website. What it can be used for is obviously for one, for advertising, you can advertise back to the people that have ever been to your website. You can take it a step further and you can do conversions based on it. Like you can set up events. So if they saw a particular page, they get you can show them an ad uh, based on the page they saw. So it gets really fancy. But everyone, whether you think you want to do Facebook ads right now or not, 
or ever in the future, you should add your Facebook pixel to your website because it can at least be collecting information um, so that one day when you do want to, it's there. And it's not that hard um, to set up. Um, let me see. So since, so y'all just see a big screen in the middle. I might as well share my screen again. Um, so they change it. They change the ads manager all the time. Period. But basically, you just go to Facebook Ads Manager. Actually, let me look. So if you go to the search and you go to whoops, I'm you still doing your man hating group. <laughs> <laughs> So it's going to show, it'll show you some stats actually. So how many events, how many have been fired on um, view content and whatever, but you can actually download the pixel from here and it just gives you a piece of code that then you put into your website. So very valuable to have. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And if you, you know, I, I can, well, I have some better instructions <laughs> on how to, uh, how to do that. She's on the water. I don't know. Anybody else? I feel like I was kind of all over the place. I hope it didn't seem that way. Oh, it's a gigantic topic. I think you did an awesome job. It is a gigantic topic, and I could talk literally for three days straight, I promise you. Um, so, trying to pare it down to what's like really important. You know, if I had to take five things, to, you know, post. Oh, one thing I didn't put her in the content because I didn't go back to the to the thing was how often to post. Um, so there's to basically kind of standards of, you know, one to two times on Facebook. That's actually grown now from like one to three times on Facebook, depending on your niche per day. So get to creating some content and put it out there. One thing you don't want to do, you want like, one thing you do want to do is you want to um, spread your content out. So like have a morning, at either noon or afternoon post, and then a, a night post. Number one, everyone's not on all day long. So you can catch people at different times. Um, if you use an automation software, a lot of times it will tell you your best time to post, so you can actually put your content in front of the people at the best time to post. But two to three times a day, every every day of the week for Facebook, if you can. And I typically do like an inspirational type post, a listening type post, and some type of educational type post. And then I throw promo posts in. Um, but a lot of times I'll just reference whatever my promo is um, in an educational post or something like that. Um so Instagram, kind of the same thing. If you're posting on Facebook, you can, you know, there's a wide, it's like 50, 50 people that say you should not post the same thing to every network. But if it meant not posting, if it meant like either posting it to all your network or not posting it, I err on the side of posting it. Somebody's going to see it. It's not, they're not going to see it if you don't post it for sure. So um for instagram you said if we have it connected to our um facebook, we're going to see all the hashtags can we put hashtags in the comments does that count you can put hashtags in the comments of instagram but you have to do it quickly so it has to be within like if you post and then immediately go to the um, first comment and post yes and that's a good way to get around um that issue okay and it is just as effective to have them in the first comment, as long as you do it quickly. I got a quick question, guys. Um, today, I was playing around with Instagram TV, which is something that I'm super, super new to. But I noticed that on Instagram TV, I could link to my Facebook business page, even though my Facebook personal page is linked to my Instagram for post. So that was kind of cool. And I don't know if I did that by accident. But do you have any advice on Instagram TV versus like stories and like, I know we need to create content, but 
How often do we need to make the stories? How often do we need them to be post? How often do we need it to be Instagram TV? When I was preparing the statistics, I don't remember if I pulled it over or not, but the story statistic was ridiculous. So stories on Instagram is the most important, even over content. So if okay. you know, we only have a limited amount of time. So order of importance. And I don't I don't I don't listen to my own advice because I have very far less time. Than, but always first and definitely video content. So your in, uh, Instagram TV is huge. I saw your video, your first Instagram TV when it came out. So oh, really, and I'm, I'm on Instagram a good bit, but oh, I mean I'm on there daily. But I happen to see it. So they are serving up that content to more people. So again, we're playing with the algorithm. So they're serving stories and they're serving Instagram TV. So in thinking about your strategy, you know, be sure that, that you're hitting those as often as you can and then filling in with the content. And you still need to post every day a regular post. Sorry. <laughs> but if you batch it, it's not bad. Right. So think about it ahead of time. Don't try to do it every single day because then it takes over an hour to just post, you know, a couple of posts. So don't do it that way. Try to think ahead and okay. sit down and spend two hours on it and try to get as much as you can get done in two hours. Um, whether if it's seven days of content or 10 days of content or 30 days of content. If you use Canva, you, you know, you've already got a template going and you kind of have your buckets going. You can make pretty quick work out of those. So how do we get the downloads of content? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a lot of background noise. A lot. Of, um, so, uh, how do we get the download from the content? How do we get the download from today? Yes. It will be, I will put it in the dialed in website on a hidden page, and I, we will, we can share the link in the group. Awesome. In the page, in the members group. Okay. So, and I'll have a couple of other um, videos that I'll put in there that are pertain to this. So, like I'll have a, have a, um, a little um, media planner that might help you. I'll put some freebies in there. Okay. All right. And we'll post all that information that we put in an email as well. And then we'll, um, we'll group y'all. We'll have the mastermind next week. And then the uh, Carl, Carla Harden the week after next doing the communication and boundaries. Oh, you're so awesome, Julie. Thank you. Oh, hold on. I think I muted you, Jamie. I was trying to mute everybody but you. All right. Talk again, Jamie. Sorry. I muted everybody. So, But if anybody has another question, we technically have a couple more minutes. Just say in the chat, say question, and then we'll bring you back on. So there was some feedback going on. Um, and again, doing something is better than nothing. Okay. When it comes to social media. Um, so do the, do as much as you can, as well as you can and reward yourself. We you pat yourself on the back that you've done it because this is a big, it's a chore for a lot of people. So any other questions? Anything um, like if we were to do this again, what would be another topic uh, or, or drilling down on a specific topic or a couple of topics? Would you want to do another session like this that was specific? Um, and if, if so, yes or no. And what would what would you want to hear? What would you want to learn? I saw a question. Is Facebook manager required for a business Facebook page? If you have a Facebook uh, page, you have Facebook manager. It's business manager that is the one that's optional. And it's a uh, people hate both of them. <laughs> so Facebook uh, business manager can own multiple pages underneath it. And you can run a lot of different things under it is why it's why it's there. It's for agencies. But but people use it for their own sales uh, personally as well. And Christina, I meant to, I, when you just said earlier, your um, 
Instagram is connected to your Facebook profile, that means that your Instagram is a personal profile instead of a business, because if it's a business, it has to be attached to your business page. Um, so if you ever go to automation, you have to upgrade to business. Uh, there's no downside to it. The only, there, there's an, an upside is that you get to direct post from something, but also you get analytics. Um, so you get a lot more um, knowing uh, people engaging in your content and that kind of thing. So it may be something that you want to look at. But if you have them tied together and it's posted into your personal, that won't happen anymore. So you'd have to weigh those two. I know you didn't ask that, but I happened to pick up on it. And SEO, you'd learn, like to learn about SEO. I assume that's what that was. Um, we can do that. I've done SEO for a long time. OK, hashtags. Yes, that's a big thing. That's actually how you uh, Instagram has grown so large that you almost have to use hashtags. And I will give you one quick tip for if you're finding hashtags use. There's a lot of people that say use 11. <laughs> you can have 30. So Instagram wants you to have 30. I mean, if they'll give you 30, use 30. Um, there, there's people that say that if you do more than that, uh, more than 11, that it it hurts you somehow. Well, that's crazy, but <laughs> they say it. Um, and the next thing is, is to do your hashtag reach search. We talked about batching. I have training on this. Um, and in um, my, I'm going to pull it up just so, cause I want to show you how, I don't even know where it went. Let's see. All right. Um, not necessarily in mine, but I'll pull this up. Let's see. So in the, da in this dashboard, in a lot of dashboards, but in this dashboard, I want to show you that so if I edit this content, so you'll see that I can post something different from, but am I, I'm not sharing. Am I sharing? Can you see my screen? Hold on. Yes. Sorry. Had a moment. All right. You can have a different hashtag. I mean, a different, um, a different text for Facebook. You see those hashtags weren't down there underneath there. And then you choose here. All right. So this is how, we um, come up with hashtags. So in here, we make hashtag bundles. This is my demo account. So I only have three in here, but like in my real account, I have like 20 sets of these. And I suggest to make sets of five and 10. And sometimes if you're in a really big hurry, 20, like this is a big set. So this be women and entrepreneurs, your hashtags are who you're thinking, who you're trying to attract with, you know, I want female entrepreneurs that want to learn social media. All right. So this, so I created this set for that. I created another in my other one. I have like 10 social media, 10 Facebook, 10 Instagram. So if I'm putting out a post on Instagram, I can choose 10 Instagram and a 20 women entrepreneur, or I can choose a 10 Facebook, a 10 Instagram and a 10 social media or something like that. So I'll literally all I have to do, like if I were to do this is click, click, click. There's all my hashtags. I'm not having to sit there and peck, 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 peck. Or if you're using this on your phone, then create batch ahead and create your um, hashtag list. All of these, put them in your notes and again, do them in sets like this. So that way you can um, grab that set and post it at one time. And again, like if you did a 10, 10 and 10, well, there's 30. And last thing on hashtags is when you're researching these, if you go to um, what is Instagram. So if you go to Instagram and you type in. Uh, put the hashtag in front of it. You type in social media. It will tell you how many it's using. Like here are suggestions. So here's where you can build your list from. All right. You're using none of these. I want to tell you why you don't you don't want to use a hashtag that has 10 million posts. Number one, the reason for this is if I click on this. Then I've got there's 10 million to wade through. So if so many people are using this, by the time I went to go look what's under here, my post is gone. OK, the life of this is very it'll just be gone. No one will ever see you. So if you. Choose between 50,000 and 500,000. So when you're researching, so find your niche, come up with, uh, 
complimentary hashtags to go with it or buckets of whatever, like things that go along with it and get down until you find, let me see, let me do social media again, until you start getting to ones that are under 500,000 and use those. So quick tip on Instagram hashtags. Um, yeah, TikTok. I'm going to start TikTok um, soon. I've already started recording content because I'm a bachelor. So I've already restored So I want to have like 30 days worth before I launch it. So um, what else? Email marketing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a huge thing. Anybody that's not using email marketing should be. It is a huge um, driver for dollars spent on email marketing. Your um, ROI is 40 to 1. So for every $1, you make $40 back. That is true of my email list. When I email, I can put out a bundle and send an email and that drives sales. So let's see. Jamie, have you seen any other questions I'm missing? I'm trying to. See if there's anything else. And I share. Yeah, I think some of those were um, just ideas for the next to dig to drill down in for one of the next ones too. Some of those, yeah, yeah, comments. So, and then I just made a post that if everyone. If, um, you'll go to the Jaldin group and just maybe make a post about this whole virtual event to try to get people to jump in on the next one. Awesome. And we'll probably use the same format. And hopefully not forget to record the front of it. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we're good, Julie. All righty. Well, thank y'all for having me. Thank you. Hurry back to Orange Beach. We miss you. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible. I miss it. I've never been away this long, ever. All right. Well, hopefully, maybe even before May, at least by May. Uh, yeah. We're, we may sneak down this weekend. Come on. <laughs> so. right. Have an awesome night, y'all. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.